Hi, my name is Ariel Zacchio. I'm the curatorial assistant and registrar here at the Museum of Craft and Design. And we're really excited to present um, our new exhibition, Art and Other Tactics, Contemporary Craft by Artist Veterans. Uh, this exhibition is a partnership between Craft in America, the Craft and Folk Art Museum in Los Angeles, and the Museum of Craft and Design. Um, it's based on an episode that Craft in America did that was titled Service, and it's curated by the director of Craft in America, Edmund Zayden. So this is a piece by Peter Volkus. Um, Peter Volkus was a nose gunner in the Army and Air Force during World War II. Um, when he returned, he went to the Black Mountain College for abstract expressionist painting. Um, he painted for a long time, and then one day he had to take a class in ceramics and found his true calling. Uh, he approaches ceramics in the same way that abstract expressionists approach painting, um, which is a really loose and uh, gestural approach. He makes pretty traditional vessels and then slashes and slices into them. Um, He's an amazing artist, and he inspired so many of the contemporary artists and ceramicists that you'll see in this exhibition. This is a great piece by William Daly. It's called Composite Form, and it's from 1967. William Daly enlisted directly after high school and fought as an Army Air Corps sergeant in World War II. His plane was shot down in Poland, and he became a prisoner of war there for 10 months. When he returned, Daly began creating these ceramic sculptures, which, as his son Tom Daly describes, could be 40 or 400 years old. So this is a piece by J.B. Blunk. Um, the title is Self-Piercing Element, and it was made in 1976. Bay Area icon J.B. Blunk has been dubbed the master of the chainsaw. Blunk was drafted to the Korean War in 1949 and served in the Army. After two years, he was discharged to Japan and studied Mingay-style pottery. He returned to California in 1954. Continuing his legacy, his piece, The Planet, commissioned for the Oakland Museum of California, is a favorite of Bay Area natives, and his home has been used as a site for artist residencies. Self-Piercing Element, also known as Hummingbird, is a stellar example of Blunk's craftsmanship, eye for asymmetry, and love of the natural world. So this piece is by an artist named Harvey Littleton. We're so excited to have this piece. It's on loan from the De Young Museum of Fine Art and a collection of Dorothy Sachs. Uh, Harvey Littleton is considered the father of the studio glass movement, which is interesting because his father was one of the inventors of Pyrex. Um, the way that Harvey Littleton creates these pieces is by taking uh, cup shapes of different colors of glass and stacking them and while they're still molten, he distorts the shapes into these beautiful structures. Uh, Harvey Littleton was an intelligence corporal in the Army Signal Corps during World War II and came back, went to school on the GI Bill and was able to create these beautiful pieces of glass for us. So this is a piece by Thomas Orr. We were fortunate enough to have Thomas on site to install this piece. Uh, Thomas was an infantry officer um, in the Vietnam War and he was stationed, he and his troops were stationed in an area called Dung Bo in Vietnam. The title of this piece is also Duck Bo, um, based on where they were stationed. And the piece represents, it's a series of um, engobe and ceramic terracotta uh, rice bowls that are empty, uh, stacked on top of sandbags, which are full. And it's meant to represent the weight that Thomas Orr carries with him from all of the lost and deceased uh, soldiers and other officers that he knew during the Vietnam War. This is a piece by Jen Hassan. It's titled A Battle Lost. Jen was a dental technician in the Army stationed in the UK from 2005 to 2009. This piece is made of combat paper, um, which is a paper made from the pulp of military uniforms. Um, it's 8,030 rolled pieces of that paper meant to represent condolence letters. And that number is significant because it's the number of uh, soldiers who are returned veteran suicides in 2014. So Jen Hassan made this piece. Um, part of her mission is to educate people about returning soldiers and veterans that have uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. So this is a piece by Ash Kyrie. Um, he's 
in the most recent Afghanistan conflict. Um, and he collected all of the press images that related to the war from 2009 to 2011. And he went through Associated Press, New York Times, LA Times, and collected all of the images of war. He found that they fit into three categories. One was kind of benign uh, soldiers during times of peace that were engaged with the culture in Afghanistan or in Iraq. Um, this photo is an example of that category. It's soldier Bo Bergdahl, um, or Bo Bergdahl uh, seated and drinking tea. Then there was the category of death and destruction. This is kind of larger images of destruction, bombs going off, um, kind of faceless war images. And the last category, which he says is the rarest, is called sacrifice. And these are images of individuals that have died or faced huge losses as a result of the war. Um, after doing this, he collects the images. He puts this um, Ben Gay dot pattern on top of them, and then we paste them on the wall. And visitors are allowed to rip and tear the image from the wall and leave the remains, the debris on the floor. Um, this just signifies how, how quickly um, images in a civilian's mind come up and disappear from news media and reporting. Throughout the course of the exhibition, he'll come back and um, we paste another photo in two months Hopefully this will all be ripped down um, from another one of the categories and do it again two months after that.